I just had a very interesting experience with the police. So it's currently 12. At 11, they banged really hard on the hall. And I didn't know what was up, so I went outside. Because usually that's how, uh, that's how boat people knock on your door. They just knock on your hall. And it reverberates through the whole thing, and then you hear it. So you see a lot of people in marinas, they just go over and like tap on the deck. It's like saying hello. There's no doorbell on a boat, so you just knock on them. So this was like a loud, frantic knock. So I thought someone's in trouble, something. So I go out there, and it's the police. And they start yelling. They're like, are you Moravia? And I'm like, no. And they're like, you don't have a name. How can you prove you're not Moravia? And I'm like, crap. <laughs> so thankfully, I have our binder with... All of our information, every port we've checked into, checked out of, all that, I keep all those papers in here. So I took this down, it has passports, documentation papers, everything. And that was helpful in calming them down and proving that no, I'm not Moravia, that we're wisdom. And then it also helped that a couple people came over and were like, no, no, he just got repainted, that's why he doesn't have his name on. And then we went through all the papers. Apparently there's a lighthouse tax that you have to pay here. Uh, there's a bit of a language barrier. It's either 17 or 7D. But I have 10 days to pay the lighthouse tax and then take it to the customs office to get the, the paper stamped. And then that paper will once again be added to our little binder. And this has everything in it. So the boat's kind of a mess with all the construction happening. So since everything was in this binder, when they started asking for documents, I'm like, let me go get those papers. And all I had to do was grab the binder. I didn't have to think, where did I file this or where did I put that? It, it, it was all in one place. The other section of the binder is these. These are the boat cards of other cruisers that we've met and boat owners that we've met along the way. And to cruisers, boat cards are like baseball cards or Pokemon cards. You collect them and you hand yours out and then you feel all the more connected with the cruising community because it is a small community and though it seems like there's a lot of us, there really aren't in the grand scheme of things. And so boat cards allow us to all stay connected and we will always have each other's contact information and pictures of each other's boats if we run into each other again. It's, it's really a cool network. Our boat card looks like this. We had ours made uh, right before we left and we hand them out wherever we go just in case anyone ever wants to get in contact with us. It's got the YouTube, it's got the rigging doctor information, so it's just a good way to stay connected and it's fun to keep a collection of the people that you've met along the way. Customs agents really appreciate when you're up front. They know that you're not intentionally trying to cheat the system unless you start acting really sketchy. It's just be up front with them. If you have it, you have it. If you don't, Tell them that you did everything you thought you were supposed to do when you did things, and anything that's missing you would like to make reparations and, and do it now. Usually in those cases, if there is a fine for doing it late, they'll waive it because you're, you're being honest and you're being upfront. Tomorrow we're going to go bright and early to the customs office and get all this paperwork squared away. That way we're done because they gave us 10 days, but I honestly can hardly remember what day of the week it is because every day is get up, work, and go to sleep. That's that's my day. And that paper will go into the binder as well. So then the next cop that says, hey, where's this paper? It's in the binder. Okay, so the doors had all night in the clamps for the glue to dry. So now we're going to take all the clamps off and then we're going to sand it and get all the runs off. So personally, the way I like to work with wood glue is put as much as you need on it, fill the seams, because I'd rather have a full seam that needs to be sanded than a void in the seam, because that's where water and dirt gets in, and then that just starts to go bad. So I like to fill everything overfilled, and then sand it down. So I don't worry about getting the joinery like absolutely perfect while I glue it together, because I overbuild it, and then I smooth it off with the sander, and then after I'm done, I have no glue lines because it's perfectly filled, and everything is rounded and like smoothed up into itself, so it looks like it was expertly joined, even though it was just very well sanded afterwards. So, that's my technique. It's easy, and I like it. Maybe you try it. <laughs> okay, um, and I do that on the website? Yeah, that's right. You have all the canvas we have. 
Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Uh, we have a lot of different colors, so you can check from there and um, pick the size you, you would like. Very good. Okay. All right, we are going to now go and upload a video. And uh, I'm going to attempt to get down the ladder, which is a feat that I have not yet accomplished. But I got on my shoe, so that's step one. That went pretty well. Is the next day, and that's the lovely sound of my knees snapping. So this is the wood that's going to be the cabinet door. It's in the clamps right now. It's dried all night long so this glue is nice and hard. Now I don't really care about glue lines that run because I'm going to sand this whole surface off and all of this comes off in the sanding so it doesn't really matter. And lastly you can see that none of this is a straight edge on either side because the area I'm working in is not square and it's not straight. So if I cut this exactly, I might be shy because I might have miscalculated something. So instead, I cut it proud, or I build it proud and then I cut it down to what I need and then I sand it down to get it perfect from there. Because you know the, the two famous carpenter lines, one is measure twice, cut once, and then the other one is it's easier to cut it off than to add it back. interesting living in the Azores on the hard. We're, we're frequently asked when, when people learn that we're American because they hear us and they look at us. When you tell them you live in the marina, they look at you like you have three heads. And I don't even bother telling them that I'm in the marina, not in the water. So currently we live in something smaller than a tiny house. Like you've seen all those things where people talk about living in tiny houses. We do the latter first. And then you have kitchen, living room, dining room area thing, the salon. And then forward a little bit, you have the bed and the head, the, the bathroom. That's it. So usually tiny houses are bigger and wider than our inside of our boat. So, so we live in like an ultra tiny house up on stilts, way out at the outskirts of town. And, and this is our home. It's, it's a very interesting feeling to be here because everyone's very accommodating, but then they look at you so confused when you say that, no, I, I live in a boat. I'm happy in a boat. I really don't want to live in a house. And uh, I'm enjoying your country and all. Our living situation is beyond what people would call small. And then we have the inconvenience that everything that would be good about a boat we don't have. We're not in the water, we can't move, and there's a ladder to get into the boat every time. So you add Maddie's foot in a brace, which she can't put any weight on, and all of a sudden it's a really, really bum deal that we're doing. 
And then you throw into it the fact that it's a construction zone. It's a total mess in there. Uh, we haven't had a bathroom in months since I started disassembling it. And then we have the visa issue, so we're back and forth, and it's just, everything is so complicated. But the beautiful part is, I finished with the construction. All the woodwork is now totally finished. Which, it's like this giant weight off my chest. Like, I've been struggling and working at this since, whew, like November-ish. Instead of getting easier, this whole visa situation is just getting more and more frustrating. We just received an email. Uh, I have received your documents to apply for temporary stay visa, nine months. However, the following is missing. Two color photos, one per person, proof of medical insurance, and proof of regular monthly income or ownership of a business. Best. And we have video footage of us getting those pictures. We gave them to the consulate. In person. In person. And we provided them with all the other information stapled together in a packet. Yeah, because... And since we're not there in the country, we can't go get new pictures taken. And also, it costs money. Yeah, so... and the other thing, I remember specifically when, when we went, I said that, you know, our income is from YouTube, and that's our monthly income, and that's how we support ourselves. And she said that's not a real business, so then I submitted the papers of owning a dental practice. And, like, all that paperwork. So there's a lot of paperwork for that. So... All that went to them, and it was sent uh, by certified mail with certain receipt. They got it. <laughs> so it's just... And oh. the fact that they won't answer the phone to talk to us, and we're having to do this all over email, is just incredibly annoying. So when they said, oh, these papers that were stapled together to the other papers that they did get aren't there, I'm like, uh-huh, right. So now we're going to go travel the quarter mile to the showers and I'm going to somehow make it there on crutches because I need to shower. Luckily we have friends in our marina who took pity and drove us to the shower so we're just waiting on her for our ride back and uh, thank goodness because it would have been quite the haul. <laughs> but now we're clean! The world is your oyster. Don't be upset if you fail. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep thinking you can do it. And you will get there. You can do it. Don't let the bad times stay bad. Use those experiences They're like an armor. Use them as knowledge on what not to do next time. Move forward. Okay, so I was gonna go pay the taxes right after, like the very next day when they were open, but it's been pouring down rain every day for the exact time that they've been open. So, haven't gone yet, but I'm still within the 10 day window they mandated. So I got my books of everything that we need to have. And we're off to go pay the tax man. People affectionately call this island the party island. It's true. I'm just walking up the street and there's a parade. I just finished up at the customs office in the marina. 
uh, got all our paperwork paid for the lighthouse tax. The lighthouse tax is pretty much, uh, it's a fee for those who use lighthouses, is uh, a simple way of putting it. So it's a tax on those who are actually going to be using the service that they're paying a tax for. That way everyone in this island who doesn't have a boat doesn't have to pay a tax for the lighthouses. And then you pay the lighthouse tax according to how much you use them. And this is based on how far you go. So if you're just going to be sailing locally around this island, the tax is either 7 or 10 euros, something minuscule. If you're going to sail between here and Madeira, it's 35 euros. And if you're going to be sailing between here and the mainland, uh, then you're looking at 70 euros, which is the highest tax. Okay, so the whole thing is you have to pay taxes based on the engine that you imported and the size of the vessel that you imported. So our documented weight is, or documented tonnage is 16 tons and the motor is a 20 kilowatt. Dentist. So it comes out to be uh, 54 euros and 40 cents is the taxes we had to pay uh, every January 1st that were in Portuguese waters. So pretty much the best way to avoid that whole tax situation is never be in Portuguese waters on January because January 1st is when the tax is calculated and taxes due January 31st. So if you come in February 1st and then leave December 31st, you don't pay the taxes. Okay, this was just a giant rat race. It was very confusing because, wow, this is a lot of information that literally just banged on our hall early one morning. So hopefully if you guys are gonna be here for the same situation uh, during this time of year, Hopefully it doesn't catch you with such a rude awakening like it hit us. Finally, there's something for me to do. I'm going to work on sanding the deck. Ideally, you should have the entire boat prepped and then you clean the whole deck and then you prime the whole deck and then you paint the whole deck. But thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.